everyone, welcome to the Eat Me, Drink Me podcast, where I, Audrey, and my occasional guest will share our personal, supernatural, and mystical experiences with you. Because in a world full of obligation and high expectations, we hope our stories inspire you to follow Holy Spirit as Alice followed the White Rabbit, but into Jesus' Wonderland, where we get to rest in, explore, and celebrate everything that He has made available to us not just in heaven, but here on earth. Let's have fun with it. All right. Cool. All (laughs) right. So everybody, I got my friend Jessica Valentine here. Thanks for being on the show. Hello. (laughs) Thank you. Yeah. I am so excited. I just want to share a little bit about like how we met. So we actually had met in Fort Wayne at a mm-hmm. a conference that was happening there, but we did not get to talk. I don't like really, no. it just didn't happen. <laughs> and no. And you said that you felt like God told you that we would connect later on. Yep. Yep. He said we would be connecting. And you didn't know how, because she lives in Florida. So oh, yeah. yeah, it was just perfect how um my family, we ended up going to Florida recently. And we got to meet Jessica and I got to uh, to, talk, you know, I got to talk with her and then God set it up for her to be an answer to prayer for me for my birthday. I wanted to go kayaking and see some dolphins. I had prayed for God to make that happen. And then she just randomly offered to any of us if we wanted to go kayaking and uh, she did. And The day that we decided to go was on my birthday, like not realizing that it was on my birthday. So it was so cool. And I got to see some dolphins. um, But the most amazing thing really was getting to talk to you and getting to hear your testimony, uh, a little bit of your testimony. Like it's so jam packed. So I just had to have her on the show because there was the answer of prayer or two prayer of me getting to kayak and see dolphins. And then Mm. there also was, uh, when we were driving down to Florida, I had been praying and I was just like, Lord, it would be so amazing to just have a face-to-face encounter with you. Like where you could just sit me down and like confirm to me everything that I feel like you're telling me. Cause I feel like I'm going crazy a little bit. Um, (laughs) and I'm like all over the place and like every day I just feel like just back and forth. It's like my, my heart feels so sure about the things that God's been teaching me about, uh, universal reconciliation and like his heart towards humanity and the inclusion of what he really did on the cross and just the finished works of the cross And uh, I've been getting a lot of persecution and like backlash on all of that and people saying things that I used to say to people. And so every now and then I just start to get a little concerned, like, am I being deceived? Am I starting to think something that's not right? So I was like, Lord, you're real. You're alive. So will you just like sit me down and just set me straight and like tell me what's true and just confirm to me? And then... I went down there and I met Jessica and she had that happen to her. (laughs) And so I guys just get ready to hear this amazing conversation and testimony. I don't know how long it's going to be. I don't care. Like I will make a five part series or whatever if I have to. Um, So yeah, there's just things that she shared that Jesus told her and they were such a confirmation to the things that I was asking Jesus about. And we are all one body. So Mm -hmm. because of what happened to her, it happened to me. And I didn't just come up with this on my own. I was putting my youngest son to bed and talking to him and praying over him. And as I was just kind of laying there in silence, After I just got done having a conversation with Jessica, Holy Spirit whispered to me and said, you prayed for a face-to-face encounter with me. 
And I just like started crying because it was like, wow, I did. And the things that you shared with me, it was so, it was that, you know, and, um, right. So, yeah. So. yeah. Yeah. Right. Because when, you know, I always say when God found me, when daddy, mm-hmm. Jesus and the Holy Spirit found me, um, you know, because I was the one that was lost. <laughs> right. Not <then>. so. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, uh, he made it perfectly clear that the, it was for the whole church, you know, uh, that it wasn't just for me. And that was obvious, m- you know, m- by midway of talking to him, it was, it was obvious that mm-hmm. all humanity was, um, included and, and stuff like that. So, so yes. And, and then he showed me things that, that, you know, the church would be doing and me meeting with them and saying with them and stuff like that. So, um, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) All right. So yeah, I, we're going to share, we're going to unpack this and now it's just going to be a conversation between me and you. And I just want it to be natural and relaxed and for you to just totally feel comfortable and free to share whatever you want to share right. and then if you have a question like maybe i brought something up at the thing go ahead and interrupt me because okay. there's so much to remember mm-hmm. on my part and we're talking three years of stuff at least so so there you go oh. so don't so feel free <laughs> yes yeah, i got like two pages I'm like, uh, dude so i'm yeah. excited all right yeah. but first let's start with your testimony you know like how you came to meet jesus and Father and okay. Holy Spirit. Yeah. So, um, well, I mean, I guess I'll start. Um, you know, I did grow up in a church, but it was a Baptist church or whatever, and uh, I didn't really like church. It, it, like I said, it cre- it creeped me out. They were just like no joy whatsoever. They didn't really believe in miracles, healings, all that. Okay. Um. So I didn't know they existed, honestly. So um, that's kind of the way I grew up. But I just remember being down in children's church and they'd have it like down in the basement area and they're singing songs. And I just remember looking at all the kids singing the songs and it scared me to death because (laughs) there was no joy. There was no joy. They were like so serious. And I'm like, this this is like not fun at all. So I just remember grabbing my little brother and um, by like the collar and just saying, we're getting the hell out of here. (laughs) (laughs) So I remember looking for the doors and stuff and uh, I found the doors to the sanctuary and the preacher was preaching. I could hear him through the doors, but it wouldn't open. So I literally like, had to like kick the doors open. (laughs) open. I disrupt the whole service. The whole sermon, the pastor is probably like, you little brat, <laughs> you know, but, oh my gosh, and I awesome. ran, yeah, I ran into my, the, my dad's arms and I was crying and I said, Aww. I don't like it. I want to go home. I don't like this church. Um, so I kind of feel like that was kind of my experience with God when I was, when I was little, you know, just there was no hope or whatever. However, one time. I did hear my dad get up there and I got to sit in the pew. I didn't have to go to children's church. And um, my dad got up there and he was giving his testimony. And I think I was like, I don't know, nine or so or 10. And I remember sitting in the pew and he, all he said was, yeah, I was just so blind, but now I can see. And I was like, even from that, I was like on the edge of my seat going, oh, my God, <laughs> is amazing. You were blind and now you can see. <laughs> so, <laughs> and I, so I was hungry for the gospel, yeah. <laughs> even though I took it so literal. But it was amazing. Like someone I knew who had fruit, uh, you know, love, peace and joy and all that. <clears throat> was preaching a gospel, a hopeful gospel, you know, just from that one statement, there's so much hope in that one statement. So I was very hungry for the gospel. Um, 
Yeah. So, and I grew up, you know, I had um, my mom, she wound up getting breast cancer um, when she was 29 years old. And then um, our dad and mom came home from the hospital one day and grabbed us and he was crying and saying that she only had um, six months to live. And I had no concept of like time at that, at that really that age. So I didn't know what six months uh, was. So I, I mostly just went around asking my mom if she was going to die today, wow. every day, because yeah. I didn't really know. She wound up living um, six years, but, um, but she suffered a lot, but she never complained. Like she was a champion. She had a broken arm for weeks on end and was still in the kitchen cooking. Wow. It pretty soon it spread to her brain and all that. And um uh she was having seizures, slurring words, and it was just just terrible. But she wound up, yeah, living six years. Um, we had to get like a caregiver. We, we grew up with a caregiver and that caregiver was not very, um, nice to me. Um, she liked to call me crazy and stuff because I was kind of a strange child. Um, but yeah, she wasn't, and I was isolated because my mom was dying and I didn't know how to handle it. Oh, okay. Um, there was no, God's going to heal you. It was just all like my mom's point of view was, I'm just going to try and fight it. Hmm. Uh, there was no option of God. God's going to heal you. You know, there, there just wasn't. So we all kind of knew, you know, she was going to die. And then let's see, I really got involved in, I, I really withdrew and just, I got involved in Ouija boards and all that oh, kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, Twelve. Uh, friends, my, me and my friends used to play it on graveyard sites and everything just was not good. But I remember one day we, I was messing with the Ouija board and it said I was going to die on my 12th birthday. And I remember I was just like, so terrified for my 12th birthday to come. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so I was fiddling with that and, 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 and of course I didn't die on my 12th mm-hmm. birthday, but we can see. Uh, I did see some stuff and uh, it was, it was, you know, demonic. It was terrible. It was scary, but. Did you feel like it was terrible at the time? Or yeah. Was it, it just scared kind of, me. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. It scared me. And so, um, and just from that point, I, I would have to say at that point, my life just started spiraling. Uh, losing my mom and that happening and all that stuff. So I was, then I was uh, pulled into a room uh, to say goodbye to my mom and I refused. I threw the hugest fit you've ever seen. Mm -hmm. Um, I just, the room was full of people and all of my family and, and my dad was just like, it's time for you to say goodbye. And I, and I started throwing my hands up in the air and said, I will never, I will never say goodbye. And uh, just, Felt so alone, you know, I didn't know how to process all of this. And so, so from that point until, uh, you know, I really, I, I physically met the Lord. Uh, my life was in shambles. You know, I went through a divorce, got married young, got pregnant young, out partying, drugs, sex, prostitution, you name it, had so many bad habits. Yeah, just terrible, terrible things. I mean, in every area of my life, I was yeah. so messed up. Weighed down by absolute sin after sin after sin, even though I didn't even realize that. And then I just remember like strange things happening throughout my childhood and stuff too. It like that I didn't know why or what or who really. Uh, just, like I remember supernatural things. Yeah. So like, I remember, uh, one time being at my grandma's house and then waking up and trying to get up and then I'd freeze <laughs> for like 10 minutes, couldn't talk or anything. And, you know, or, uh, or I'd be talking to people and all of a sudden, they would start moving and sounding like they were in slow motion. That happened very frequently. Um, yeah. So 
so it was hard for me to even talk to people Mm -hmm. Um, or I'd see them like, how do I explain it? I would see like things they did in their past or something. Oh, and and it was very, yeah. And it was very, but I didn't know that's what it was at the time. Uh And it made school difficult. It made everything difficult. Plus losing my mom. It was just, everything was difficult. So schooling wasn't really my, my shindig. I really made it to the eighth grade. I went into ninth grade, but I just kept getting held back and held back because I was mm-hmm. ditching so much. Um, I just, yeah, it just wasn't, you know, right for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, I thought. So anyways, I, my, at 19, I remember sleeping and I hear, um, I hear my mother's voice and it's like in the middle of the night. And I just remember, I felt like I'd woken up and then I stood up or, and then sat on the edge of my bed. And there I could see my mother crystal clear. And she had died when I was just shy of my 13th birthday. So uh, I remember apologizing, like crying. Mm. And saying, I'm so sorry I didn't say goodbye, you know? And she, she just kept saying, I already know. And I'm just thinking, maybe she didn't hear me right, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I said it again. And she says, I already know. I mean, that's all she said to me. Yeah. But it was like huh. so enough. Like, wow, you know it all? You know, you you know it already? You know that? That I, I really am sorry, but, and the way she looked, it was a total face to face, you know, like, um, her, okay, her complexion <laughs> was so amazing. It's like, it's so beautiful. It's like almost like see through, but I, I can't even explain it. Glistening. Uh, and then she just had like these rays of glory coming out of her. <laughs> and her hands were always up like this. Where's <laughs> it yeah. looked like this? Just receipt constantly, mm-hmm. like she was receiving from the the Lord. Wow. And um, yeah, and it was just like wonderful. And then she didn't speak with her mouth, and I didn't speak with my mouth, and I knew what she was saying. So um, and it, so it was total telepathic. And, and I'm not saying by any means that that's how it is all the time. Yeah. You know, will we talk with our mouth? I have no idea, you know. Um, but that's how it was for me and her at that time. Amazing. Yeah. And then I remember just looking back, just like, I need to look back. And I looked back on my bed and there's my body laying on my bed. So it's like, it was like oh. in my body, out of my body. I don't know. Uh, like someone had unzipped my body and I didn't feel anything. I didn't feel any different. Didn't yeah. feel nothing. Like you literally just um, thought you had stood up or something and or sitting yeah, on your bed. I was, I was sitting on the edge of my bed. <laughs> <laughs> I felt it, but my body was laying down. Wow. I'm like, that's so crazy. But yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, but it was so good to see her. And, and I was like, not doing good in that time of my life. You know, I think, like I said, I, I told you guys that, uh, at the resolution that I, I think I was just throwing a kager and charging at the door at the time. Like I, I was not doing good. Mm-hmm. I had just had my first, um, son too. So, um, yeah. And then, okay. And then, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm out doing drugs and this and that. And, uh, you know, fiddling with, I was just partying all the time, bar brawls, everything. Um, and then when I was, um, 29, I, I was in a bad relationship, just had my fifth child. Um, I was in a bad marriage and, uh, married him so fast. Just, I was just crazy, you know, it's just crazy. I, I, I like, I look back at her and I'm like, who the heck was that? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I feel the same way. And yeah, it's crazy how 
many bizarre things can happen in such a condensed amount of time. And it just feels like it was a lifetime, but it wasn't even your life. It was somebody else's. It really like, was. It it really was. So, um, yeah, I, I was 29 years old, but I was getting beat up on a daily basis. Um, and it was worse when I was pregnant. Whenever I was pregnant, I got it a thousand times worse for some That's reason. Horrible. Yeah. And so, and with him, you know, and, and before I even start talking about this, I hold no ill will against him. I'll never give out his name. I want nothing held against him whatsoever. Um, he's completely forgiven by me and (laughs) by father, son, and Holy spirit. Mm -hmm. He's completely Mm -hmm. forgiven. He's Mm -hmm. just not aware of that. You um, you, You do good in portraying that though. Like, I've heard you share twice and mm-hmm. I never even linger on like any negative feelings towards him because I think right. I just see what God brought you out of, you know, just all, all the focus is on God and you and that shows where your heart is, you know, and then mm-hmm. of course it's good to pray for these people that have yeah. done these things. Cause who knows where they're at, you know, only God knows. So. Um, right. But like the abuse was like on a daily basis and stuff like that. And just to give you some examples of what I uh, went through, only for the sake of like other women who have gone through it. Um, yeah. Thank you. And because, yeah. And because uh, I clearly I had no idea what love was. It was so warped. Mm-hmm. Um in my mind after all the abuse and everything, but, um, just so like, for instance, um, I love to dance and, um, he did too, but he, um, he would have me dance. And then while I was dancing, he would like pull down my pants in front of people. So he used like humiliation tactic. He would, um, pull my hair and, punch me in the face, um, drag me by my hair, um, and just, you know, all the name calling that you could think of. And yeah. And like I said, when I was pregnant, it was, it was like a thousand times worse for some reason, but it's not my job to try and figure it out. (laughs) Um, or cure him or save him. (laughs) So, um, so that that would happen a lot, or or if 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 I wanted um, grocery money, I wasn't working at the time. I was like a housewife, and if I wanted grocery money or something, it was always well, what are you going to give me? So it was always I had to give him something for him to give me something. So that type of thing, yeah, it was pretty um, intense. And so at that time, I still had like I didn't have like a relationship with daddy son and holy spirit but i thought in my mind that well i've li- made my bed now i have to lay in it that type of mentality okay. and i deserve this for all the bad i i have done but i remember so i i would drown myself in pills i had five children i was always pregnant <laughs> and i just remember thinking or saying out loud, really, like if that's, if something doesn't change, I'm going to die. Like yeah. I'm going to yeah. die. And I did fear like that he was going to kill me and stuff um, because the beatings were so bad. And then I just remember like looking in my Bible and um, which one was it? It was, um, it was when Moses' son what didn't get circumcised and it said God was going to smite him. That was like the first thing I opened up to. And I was like, yeah, you're so mean. Just like, (laughs) (laughs) yeah, but something was happening. Okay. (laughs) Something was going on. Like something drew you to even open it in the first place. Yeah. I mean, then you see that and and it's like, (laughs) Yeah. And now I see it so clearly. I'm like, oh my God, you were trying to talk to me like so many times even before that. But (laughs) Um, yeah, so I just remember crying. I didn't say a prayer, didn't say a repentance speech. I just sat there and I cried. 
uh, and mumbled. And I remember like the first thing that had happened is <laughs> through scripture, I had one of those Bible study Bibles. I don't know. It was given to me. And it the first thing, and it just pops right off the page. You know how when the Holy Spirit's speaking to you through the word, yeah. right? Yeah, it is so, alive. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. So, but it was a Bible study one. So these are some, you know, written notes by, I don't know, whoever wrote the Bible study Bible. Nice. And he says, God always responds to the most repentive and humble heart. And I'm like, I didn't even say anything. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious <laughs> because I'm like, I didn't, I just cried. That's yeah. all I did. I didn't say a repentance speech. I mean, I think that all of us gr growing up, like even in a little church, you know, whatever, we all knew like you had to go to the altar and, mm -hmm. and say sorry for every little thing that you did. I didn't, right. you know? So I, I automatically thought that was hilarious and great. <laughs> um. So, and that was really comfortable and that happened, like he kept speaking through the word for, I don't even know how long. Okay. But maybe like three months or so. And I was like, mm -hmm. yeah, this is really cool. You know, like, yeah, I, I'm totally down with this. Super comfortable. <laughs> That's awesome. um, yeah. Um, and I felt so good. Like I felt really good. And I remember calling my dad and my stepmom. And going, why didn't you guys tell me? Why didn't you tell me it feels this good? And my dad was like, Oh, I, I don't, I didn't know. Like, and I'm like, oh my God, because like we grew up in a Baptist church. We don't believe in like all that supernatural stuff or whatever. And but man, I felt really good, you know, yeah. just loved like I like, like love was just like ooey gooey pouring all within my belly. And I, it just felt great. Um, yeah, so much and, yeah um, I couldn't shut up about it. Mm -hmm. Can I, okay. I just want to backtrack real quick. So you said that you just randomly felt to open the Bible. You saw that verse and you were just feeling like, yeah, God, you're so mean. Like, so where was the shift from that to what you're talking about right now? I didn't catch that. Oh, the shift from th then to now? Yeah, like you reading that and thinking to yourself that God was mean, or was that sarcasm? Because no, you saw I something really deeper. That. Yeah. I thought he was mean. Right. Because so I guess because, you know, like with losing my mom and everything and thinking that God's in control mm -hmm. and that he's the one taking my mom, he's the taker of life and this and that. He gave her cancer because he's in control and he gives diseases and he's mean that type of thing. Yeah. Um, but <clears throat> I'm still thinking he's kind of mean, but I'm happy. So it okay. doesn't really match up now, does it? Okay. <laughs> you just were like going, like you were just being drawn basically. So it did. I, I kind of oh, went through oh, a I similar totally. thing. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Now that I think about it, like after my first husband had died, I would call up all my Christian friends and they would all say like, you know, I don't know what to say other than that God loves you. And the whole time I'm talking to them, I'm like accusing God of being horrible for taking my husband's life. And why does he let all these horrible things happen to me and stuff? And everyone, like nobody could give me an answer. They just kept saying, I don't know, but I know that God loves you. And, exactly. Uh, but I kept seeking, like, even though I was angry. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Right. I, all and, right. Yeah. I'm jiving. And I did. Yeah. And I, I was too. Um but yeah, I mean, but there was a definite switch, like after, you know, feeling all that love and stuff like that, like maybe I do have it wrong, but I didn't, I don't, I didn't know. So, um, because why would it feel so good? You know, it's such right. a contradiction. It is. <laughs> <laughs> such a contradiction. <laughs> um, but yeah, I remember, um, and then everything changed. Everything's about to get really uncomfortable. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I love how that's the word that you, <laughs> you use. <laughs> Let's sit back and brace yourselves. <laughs> Let's just see belts on. Listen, it's just as shocking for me as it is for everybody else. <laughs> Even no matter how many times I tell it. But um, I'm how, so... How, how long ago was this? 
Okay, so this was God seventeen years ago. I've been sitting okay. on it for seventeen years. I, I I called my best friend the other day and I said the cat coming out of the bag, sister. Uh, <laughs> and she's yeah. like, yes, finally. <laughs> There's really only a couple people who know my story. Um, yeah, it's just, um, but cats out of the bag. Anyways. <laughs> um, anyways, so I was 29 years old, okay? And I just had my fifth child. And um, so it was about uh, 17 years ago or so. So I remember um, it being in the middle of the night, I'm asleep, and I hear this wind. <laughs> I mean, a strong wind. And I can hear dogs barking so they can hear it. And I can hear this like, almost like it sounds like a hoverboard, like, and vibrating, you know? And I... Now, one thing I did notice, too, is I saw them come in. I saw these two cherubim angels come in. And I, now, I had never read the Bible, okay? <laughs> I didn't even so know. So you didn't know they things. were cherubim? I had no idea they were cherubims um, at the time. I just knew, I knew they were angels, but I, I didn't know they were cherubim. Um, and then um, they just came through my walls. <laughs> Oh they didn't need walls. <laughs> and so, um, and one was on top of me and the glory and the power was so intense. I laid there like a dead slug. I could not move. I was awake, but I, I could not move. I, I, I didn't get up. I just laid there like a dead slug. And um, he was just hovering over me and his face, I'll never forget his face. So his face looked like a man, but even that, like, an angel, angelic face. Yeah. I, I, I wish okay. I could explain it, but, and he did have on like this great, like armor almost mm -hmm. like okay. metal or steel. I don't know, but, and it was, wow. Like, where did you come from? You know? <laughs> um, and I, but he would look at me like gazing at me and yeah. like, you know, and I knew he was like my friend. Um, so I was like at peace, but I just, but the glory was so strong and the baby started crying and he, he slept in the room. Um, and, um, my ex, because I wasn't getting up and thought I was asleep and he couldn't handle like hearing crying in the middle of the night and stuff like that. So he reached over and he pulled my hair and said, get up. And then the angel turned his head to the left and his face turned into a lion's face. Wow. So, yeah. And it, and I wouldn't say it's like, just like the, the face of a man and the face of a lion, I wouldn't say like, it's exactly like a man, but it, it mimics a man and the lion mimics the lion. That's the best way I can describe it. Um, <clears throat> so I, the angel finally got off of me and I was able to get up after that. Let's see what happened next. Um, so I get up, deal with the baby, everything, go lay back down and I hear my voice being called into the kitchen. I go into the kitchen and I took my Bible in there and how I, how did I even know to do that? I don't know, but <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. That's awesome. It's like when I went to the mountains, like I packed this Bible for some reason. Like, why would I do that? Like, I don't ever, I wasn't reading it at the time, but. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, uh, anyway, so I go into the kitchen, mind you, it's the middle of the night, which I think is so profound and, and. That's exactly what's happening in our day. The Lord is waking people up. And, mm -hmm. and I think that's why he did it that way with me. Um, but anyways, I go into the kitchen and I can feel somebody like standing next to me. And I can hear. And it and it did. It sounded like a, a feminine voice. Um, and, and she said, do you know who I am? 
I didn't. I didn't. Yeah, you just said no. I didn't say no, but I'm like, I'm in big trouble because for some reason I know they know what I'm thinking and everything. Yeah. But then she had said, you know, I am God. I am ho- or I am Holy Spirit. I am God. And my head instantly bowed. It's like it all happened at once. My head instantly wow. bowed. There was a light that shone over me. Um, and this light was like, like, oh, my God, you can breathe so well. Like, it's like amazing, like the breath of this light. Oh. Um, but then she introduced me to Jesus be- because that's what Holy Spirit does. And then there's Jesus. It's like the, it was like the circle. And and Jesus appeared and the light came and then a scroll flew in flew in front of my face. Because he was holding a scroll. Huh. Um, and it was written in another language. And what now I know is like Greek or Hebrew. I don't know which one okay. <laughs> was written. And then um he had said. I love you because my father in heaven loves you. And he, the first thing he did was introduce me and include me in the father. And so I was right dead smack in the middle of the Trinity. So (laughs) I, you know, and, and I want to explain this too. Like just because like I was, I was there and I, I literally saw Trinity. Mm -hmm. I saw him, uh, does not mean I can even wrap my mind around it still. Yeah. There's just 17 so years much years later. Yeah. No. Uh-uh. I just know that there's nowhere where one is that one isn't. And then there they have distinction, you know? They're one with distinction. Three persons, one God with distinction. So you knew when you were talking to daddy versus Jesus, but yet you also knew that Jesus was right there. And so was Holy Spirit. (laughs) I mean, that's the best way I can explain it. Yeah. So I know that uh, what the scroll was, I know that that was the covenant just because later, because I remember what um, he told me at that time, he had told me stuff about the new covenant. He was speaking like, you'll never not know me. Um, no one will ever say um, you got to know the Lord because you know the Lord. And wow. um, I'm setting up a new covenant. I'll write the truth on your heart. All They're this all stuff. scriptures. That's all scriptures. Yes, all of them. In case anybody thinks that doesn't sound true, that is in the Bible. All the only them. thing different that he did tell me was I'll write the truth on your heart. Mm-hmm. And not the law, but but the law of love is true. So I was just like blown away. I was terrified. <laughs> <laughs> and for a second, when that light like shone over me, I really for a split second, I thought I was being abducted by aliens. <laughs> and it's so funny. Like you're in the middle of this encounter with God, but there's <laughs> still this other part of you that's thinking Literally being for just one second, but then, <laughs> but then he says, uh, do you love me? And I remember like, am I going to, am I going to lie? Am I going to, you know? And I said, yes, because what are you, I'm not going to say no, <laughs> like honest to God, that, that's, that was going through my mind. There's no way I'm going to say no. And Like I could feel like when Jesus was holding the scroll, I could literally feel him looking at me with such like romance. Mm. It was really romance. Passion. It, yeah, it was, it was amazing. Like he loves me. He was in love with me. (laughs) Like I, I knew it. And then I remember him like calling me dove eyes and, um, just stuff like that, t- talking about betrothal. Um, <laughs> he was so romantic. What was he <laughs> saying about betrothal? Just, he just said that you're betrothed. Mm. That's what he said. He, but he's talking about the bride of Christ and all yeah. of that, right? 
And um, he literally <laughs> also, he had said, um, and so I'm waiting for him to like mention my sins <laughs> or whatever. And it was terrifying because like every fiber of your being came alive and your head was bowed and, and it was so intense. And yet, and you know that just like with the flick of his finger, he could smite you, but, but, but he all, he, all that comes out of his mouth, I love you. What can I give you? Wow. And I'm like, oh my God, what is happening? <laughs> I, I, I was so like undone, mm -hmm. terrified, undone in, in all a good way. Um, but also being, well, what I thought was realistic and how am I going to live this way? And the Baptist never told me about this. I, I mean, <laughs> I was thinking, how am I going to live? How am I going to do this? Yeah. Uh, and well, and thinking, well, hopefully he'll go back to where he came from tomorrow. <laughs> like I, <laughs> I really mm -hmm. thought that. Uh, anyways, yeah, so, um, then that, that was all over with. I went and laid back down and then, um, I, I remember him calling me again and he said, I didn't tell you you could go back to sleep. That's what he said. <laughs> so oh, uh, and so <laughs> I got up again and he started reading me the Bible. So I would open the Bible. I went back to the kitchen. The Bible was open. He started reading. And I remember feeling like so tired. Like it's the middle of the night. There's a lot that's happened. <laughs> and I remember feeling so tired. And I remember Christ like holding my eyelids open with his, with his fingertips. It was a total supernatural thing. And that really scared me. And my eyes started moving like this, back oh. and forth, back and forth, as he read me a lot of the Bible. I, I remember what he read me. He read me about Apostle Paul going on a boat. He crashed onto an island of uh, Malta, and it's the island of, like, honey. Oh. And, and all the guys were worried about, like, their destruction and this and that. And Paul's like, you know, like basically fear not, just throw all that junk overboard. And, and the Lord said, we're going to live. And they crashed on the island. And then all these supernatural things happened. He got bitten by a snake and lived and everything. Yeah. I'll never forget it that. <laughs> yeah. He just shook it off. And yeah. So that all passed. And I, I just remember finally going to bed and just thinking, I just, Lord, please, like, can you not do that again? It you know it was wow it was it was terrifying but in such a good way mm -hmm. and the way I can explain that is like I had explained at the resolution uh, if you're in the ocean and you see a huge whale come up next to you it's terrifying in such a good way it's like yeah. awe you're in awe and, and that's that's what what it was like. But I just couldn't imagine living my life. I thought that that my life was going to continue like that every single day, which it did <laughs> for about uh, maybe three years. But I thought it was like forever. It was going to forever be that way. And yeah. but it didn't matter because I, I wound up falling in love with him. <laughs> but um, and then his voice, you know, it it really does like the like the Bible states. It really does. It is the voice the sound of many waters that that does sound like his voice and that is all humanity responding yes and amen and all humanity in him wow so they're all saying they're all speaking it was <laughs> what wow what? so it's like the voice of many waters is what it sounds like yes but it is it sounds like that because it's like this overflow bubbling up out of everybody just worshiping him yeah, wow. wow. it was so, it was so good. Wow. Um. So so that happened. It's <laughs> <laughs> amazing. And I have heard I've that heard too. Of, I've heard that voice of many waters one night when I yeah. was sleeping. It woke me up. Yeah. He said my name, and that's exactly what it sounded like. <laughs> it's like if water was talking. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, it was. Oh, yeah, so it, precious. Wow. Yeah. So um, he also did tell me too that he would send. He says, "I'm sending you a teacher." So I'm thinking that someone's going to knock at the door and it's going to be a literal teacher. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but all along it was it was Holy Spirit is who the he was teacher. talking about. Yeah, the teacher. Um, yeah. So, um, and they were so, they were jolly and in love and just, it was great. It was, it was, it was really wonderful to see um, the Lord like that. And that began my journey to discovering the, the true nature of who God is. Mm-hmm. Um, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And does Jesus look just like Father? Absolutely. <laughs> um, but from that day on, now, from that day on, um, my whole world changed. Um, and like I said, it was probably, um, I, I have to guess, it was like a three-year period of, a, on a regular basis, encounters, um, constant. Yeah. Um this showed me a couple things. This showed me that, well, either heaven has just landed on earth or heaven has been on earth. Mm-hmm. That was another thing it showed me. So um, I didn't have to, I didn't float up and go into the heavens or, yeah. you know, it, it came in my living room. So <laughs> I just got the um, chills all over me right now. Yeah. <laughs> Um, okay. What is next? So now before I get like totally into it too, is the first thing that I want to say is that I didn't really have a recollection of the day nor the hour or time. I was so wrapped up in it and face to face encounters that to where I remember standing at the calendar so frustrated because I could not, I did not know the day. And so I remember standing there and he said, you can look at that all you want. You'll never know the day nor the hour. (laughs) And it's true. You get so raptured up. Yeah. You know, in, in this beautiful encounter that's taking place. What was Um, that like having kids, like five kids? Yeah, that was hard. Wow. (laughs) Wow. Like, would he uh, come and just talk to you while you're taking care of yes. everybody? In fact, I learned that Christ was creator because he was playing with my son, Josiah, when he was a baby. Aww. He was eating spaghetti. I'll never forget. He was eating spaghetti and um, in his high chair and making a mess. You know how spaghetti is so cute. <laughs> and... uh Christ was staring at him and I'm looking at Christ, look at him just with that same adoration and sweetness that he looked at me. And, um, I said, wow, isn't he cute? And he goes, he's so beautiful. And he says, I created him. (laughs) And, and I'm like, oh my God, like what? (laughs) So (laughs) I'm like, wow, man, you're looking at creator with creation and you're just so blown away and lit you're like wait what did you say (laughs) whoa (laughs) so it was amazing (sighs) one thing about christ too is because the testimony of jesus is the spirit of prophecy so it was crazy like whenever he appeared you know in the physical um prophetic things were flowing he was trying he was talking to me but other prophetic things are just flowing from his belly like concerning the world his kids this that it was just like whoa so you're getting it all at like once and you're like whoa (laughs) oh my gosh i don't even know how to describe it and now so because i didn't know like the day nor the hour. I mean, I'm sure at different parts of the day, I knew the day, but he really had to like keep me on track. Um, But because of that, I noticed that there was no, um, mm, how do I say it? There was no like 
distance or delays with miracles, healing, signs, wonders, they were all happening now. Mm. You see what I mean? Because there was no time. Mm-hmm. There like really was to no you time. personally or to people around you, or you just saw what he was doing in yeah, other both. people's? Both. Yeah, both. Um, so that was that. And then, but one of the first things that he actually showed me was he told me a lot of heresies that were going to be going through that they, they've been back in the day, but they're still going. Uh, and he was, you know, pretty strict about this one was um, that we are not God. I remember him saying that we did he are explain, not God. Did he explain that? Like Mm-mm. why it's a heresy or how that comes to be? Um, no, he didn't okay. really explain that. Um, a lot of things he didn't explain. And I think too, just for the sake of there are teachers out there that he has raised up and a lot of things he'll let them explain too. But mm-hmm. I just knew that because he had just said, you are not God. You are not God. And I was mm-hmm. terrified. I was like, wow. But I told you too, prophetic things were coming out of him. Stuff yeah. that he was dealing with, what issues within the church or whatever. Yeah. But the next thing he did was I was in my hallway and I was knelt down by my Bible. And he said, um, I know you hear me because I was trying to ignore him because, <laughs> because it was uh, uncomfortable. You know, I, it was the beginning, the fresh stages. It was very uncomfortable. And he says, I know you hear me. And uh, then he goes, oh, I, fine, I'll do it. And he jumps. He literally jumps into the word. I watched him do it. And then the word starts spinning around. And then it like transforms all the letters, like mix, match, whatever. And it said, um, I know your husband pulls down your pants and smacks you in the face and I'm here to help you. Okay. So I was seeing so many supernatural things that my mind literally could not even contain it. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, So that, so then that was him showing me that he's the word. Just like the Bible talks mm-hmm. about, just like it says, he is the word. Like you can listen to me. I am the word. You need to listen to what I'm saying. I'm the word. Yeah. <laughs> and then another thing, not knowing the, the time and everything is not knowing the order of these things happening. I just remember mm-hmm. the beginning mm-hmm. of what it started with. So, um, yeah, yeah. Not even knowing the order that it, that it happened in, but knowing that they all happened. And I just know the beginning. And that was, that was it. But um, another thing that he, he showed me, I remember I was sitting on the couch and I was watching this program. It was a Christian program. There was this person on um, the Christian program speaking in tongues. And I was like, Oh, what is that? (laughs) Ooh, that's weird. (laughs) Yeah, it's like it's cringy if you're not used to it and you don't understand it. Don't want that one. (laughs) And he said, he said, I've got a gift for you. I want to give you a gift. I said, I don't want it. (laughs) I don't want it. And he's like, Have you ever seen Three Stooges? Because that's what What? they sound like. And he knows the answer to that. And then he starts doing like the three stooges on me, like being <laughs> playful. Like, boop, 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 boop. he's all, that's all. It's fun, it's, you know? And I'm like, I told you I don't want that. I don't want to sound like the three stooges. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And then uh, he said, okay, well, um, you're going to feel like you have to burp. Just let it bubble up, bubble up, bubble up. I'm like, I told you I don't want it. And like within five seconds, I can feel it bubble up, bubble up, bubble up. And I'm like, la, 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 you know? <laughs> like, okay. Oh my gosh. It's so funny. My face hurts. I'm like smiling so much. Yeah. He's, he was so, he was so much fun. You know, <laughs> he really was. So he was like proving my, Uh, you know, my old mindset so wrong, you know, which is good. Well, Um, something I just thought of is like the gift of tongues 
It's like mm-hmm. we are speaking this mixture of languages. I mean, it's just a conglomeration of a whole bunch of different languages. And mm-hmm. I mean, because if you think about it, there's languages where they click. They just click to each yeah. other, you know? So yeah. literally, I think anything we say in tongues, it's like, yes, it's a heavenly language. But I think that's because it's like the embodiment of all languages at once. And mm-hmm. you saying that, you know, the the voice of many waters is every tongue, you know, every person professing, you know, yes and amen, um, worshiping the Lord. I hope that makes sense. Yeah. But that's just like hitting me right now with a revelation of the importance of the gift of speaking in tongues is because it's like we're partaking in that union. We're partaking in mm-hmm. the unity of that and how we're united is through Holy Spirit, uniting us in the body of Christ, right? So yeah. it's like, yeah. that just hit me. <clears throat> yeah, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, another oh. thing that he uh, showed me, and this is pretty ridiculously funny too, but I remember Jesus was standing right in front of me and he had like something in his hand. <laughs> <laughs> it looked like I don't know. I call it the shepherd's rod. I don't know. Okay. Um. Yeah. He was holding something, and I was. I remember I was sitting on the couch, and uh, he tapped me on the head with it. Not. He didn't like do it hard or anything. He just tapped me and goes, "You're righteous." I stood up. That really offended me. <laughs> no, I'm not. And wow. then he tapped me on the head again, and bam, I'd go down. Fell out completely. And he'd do it again. You're righteous. And I'd stand up again. No, I'm not. Tap me again. Down. I'm like, oh my God, I'm passing out. That's what I'm thinking. I had no idea any of this existed. Okay. I didn't know any of this. I didn't know falling out, falling on the ground, anything. And uh, I remember, like, I wanted to call 911. <laughs> wow. I wanted to call 911 because I'm like, why am I passing out? Why am I passing out all the time? You know, because I'm like, I don't know. Is that normal? Am I supposed to be passed? Is he making me pass out? So um, that was the first I knew that we were righteous. Yeah. We're righteous in him. So you it's finally, not- did you finally receive it? Yes, I sure did. I'm not, like, try and fight. It doesn't work. We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. If you believe more people should hear this good news, please consider donating to the Eat Me, Drink Me podcast. We need your support to cover the show's cost and achieve our ministry goals. Even a monthly donation of just $1 from each listener would make such a significant difference. Additionally, if you're interested in receiving something in return for your contribution, you can browse our unique designs and artwork in our merch store or explore our affiliate programs where you'll find products such as Bible study tools, beautiful gifts, affordable essential oils, and even delicious teas and coffee. To find more information, simply visit our website at www.eatmedrinkmepodcast.net and click on the donate tab. I love you. Now back to our show. I'm always a little envious of people who are like, oh, I had the encounter on such and such day and at such and such hour. I'm like, I didn't know the day nor the hour. I don't know what you're talking about. See, and I bet they would be envious of you, you know, it's like <laughs> just getting lost in everything. Like, dude. Oh, and I, my God. And that's why. Well, there really eternal. was no time. Right. There was no time. And I mean, like eventually, life. eventually, Audrey, this is what we're all going to be walking in. Exactly. It's like we're eternity. already walking we're just, in it. We just haven't unpackaged it yet. It's so multidimensional. Like we're literally it, it is walking it is. in so many different places in time. And like I've I think part of why some people believe in reincarnation is because without knowing who Jesus really is and knowing what he embodies and knowing that we are in him and that we're connected in him, I could totally understand why people would fall into thinking that. Because I myself have like, I have felt like I have lived so many different lifetimes. Like, I feel like I can relate to people, um, you know, that are in totally different situations than what I've ever been in. I can watch a movie and I feel like I've experienced what that person is experiencing. And I start to find myself thinking like, wait a second, 
I haven't experienced that or anything like that, but yet I feel like I have. And I think mm-hmm. that it's because of that, like eternity, just being overlapped and us being inside of him who yeah. is all wisdom, all knowledge, all experience, like everything all in one person of Jesus and we're in him. So it's like, I don't even know how to put I know, that into words, I know. but um exactly my gosh it's amazing so i wanted to share (laughs) something this is really interesting um so while you were talking about him tapping you on the head (laughs) and saying you're righteous i was thinking like it reminded me of like when someone is knighted you know the Mm -hmm. they don't do it on their head but they well they i think they do they they do the shoulders and then they do the head sometimes or maybe maybe it's just the shoulders i don't remember but either way it made me think of the act of knighting someone and then when you said you passed out and you kept passing out Um, it's really like what happens at like a meeting you know what i mean or whatever you're like you're down you're you go down (laughs) but it's yeah it does and it's like because he's just so yeah the truth is so powerful and that's probably why like you know when the people came to get jesus in the garden and and he said i am like they fell backwards (laughs) they all fell um but Uh, that was another thing too was was when uh he when Holy Spirit, do you know who I am? When I heard I am, that's when my head bowed, you know. I oh, am God. Wow. I am God. Bowed. Wow. And Every- just when you were talking, I just was like, my head was like feeling heavy. Like the back <laughs> of my neck was so weak, and it was like I could have just bowed my head because it just felt so like weird on the back of my neck. <laughs> That's awesome. That's cool that you say that. (laughs) My gosh. So I want to throw this in here because, um, so, okay, you passing out. So then this correlated to this movie. I think it's just called King Arthur, King Arthur and like sword something. Anyways, it's one of the newest King Arthur movies. Got the actor from I think it's called Son of, Sons of Anarchy or something. I've never watched it, but I know that he's in that. So, anyways, it's that one. It's my favorite, like one of my favorite movies. There's so mm. many parallels in it. Okay, but what's standing out to me right now is that he couldn't like everyone else once they they saw him pull out the sword because everyone was like it was mandatory for everyone to try and pull the sword out of the stone. Yeah. Um, who ended up being his father. I'm kind of ruining it anyways, but it's still so profound. It ends up being his father who had turned to stone, which is like a picture of how Jesus was like, or, and God was there with Jesus, you know, being co-crucified, like pierced, you know, like they were all there together. Um, Jesus was pierced for us. And mm-hmm. so he pulls out the sword. He's the son of the father and um he passes out okay and so then he gets rescued and now everybody knows that he is the prophesied son to come and like take over the kingdom and like rule and reign okay and but every time that he tries to use the sword he passes out and <laughs> this this mage tells him that it's because he's not accepting who he really is. So he passes out because he's not accepting who he is. That's so true. like you not accepting that you're righteous, <laughs> it was like you just kept passing out. <laughs> is what that made me think of. And just how powerful it is to accept that he says we are righteous, whether we yeah. understand it or fathom it you know but like to just receive it is so it's so powerful yeah (laughs) yeah that's a good observation and then when he finally received it he didn't pass out and he kicked butt man and like (laughs) destroyed some evil stuff you know so it was just so powerful (laughs) yeah it, th- no, it is. It, it was. I was like, I, and I was very offended, you know. 
So funny. <laughs> he is so offensive. He's that rock, that stone. Of yeah. The, the rock. But, offense. you know, grace preachers are the same way to, to you know, religious people who come mm-hmm. up and, you know, when they, especially when you're telling them and they're included in this good news gospel, who are they offended? <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know. It was my old Adamic mindset, and um, we all have one. <laughs> and, but the me. truth is, we don't have it, and we have a new one. And uh, <laughs> it's been that old one has been co crucified, died with yeah. Christ. Okay. The sooner we can receive that, the better. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, um, all right. What's how next? Do- uh, so. Okay, well, so the rod of righteousness, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. <laughs> okay, so that's how I found out we were righteous. <laughs> that's awesome. Then um, there seemed to be like this electrocuting <laughs> type of uh, vibrating going on. And I'm like, uh, maybe I'm having a seizure. <laughs> This is amazing to me. Like so glamorous. You know, I'm Jesus, you know, Daddy, Jesus and Sweet Holy Spirit and the angels and the cloud of witnesses. They had they had a great time (laughs) with me. Oh my god. They would crack, they would literally crack jokes. (laughs) Are you sure? Are you sure it's her Lord? Really? <laughs> yeah, oh my gosh. They would crack jokes. They would crack jokes all the time, you know, like wow. um daddy, are you sure because she's <laughs> and we would just laugh. <laughs> That's so awesome. Um, but just to give you like a quick rundown of the whole the testimony, you know, and then like you said, maybe take it and then what we're going to um, try and tackle each topic and just so she can go more in depth on the topics and we can just kind of sit in those topics for a bit and just yeah you share what he's taught you and then I feel like oftentimes when we've talked like I get revelation when you talk or I feel like I have an understanding of something that he showed you and like it's just mm-hmm. fun to go back and just share yeah. about all of that so that's we're definitely easiest gonna do that. for me, I tell you. It really, <laughs> awesome. It's really a lot easier than trying to go like in order because it's not in order, anyways. Right. Um. Yeah. So, um. So he was just showing me all of these things and, and everything, like who we are, identity. Identity was a big thing. Um. Um. Teaching me that we're we're precious. We're loved. We're we're cherished. Um, and like, we shouldn't even be like speaking negatively, you know, negative about ourselves and stuff like that. And so he showed me in a unique way with that. Um, and then, you know, just the, the atmosphere, the atmosphere was completely, my eyes were opened up to the atmosphere of the reality that, that the church experiences, um, every day, whether they believe it or not or see it or not. Mm-hmm. Um, just the, the atmosphere with the with the angels and um the cloud of witnesses um and you know all those that are in the cloud of witnesses and and how the cloud of witnesses could be different for for all people because some of your loved ones are in there. Mm-hmm. I don't know. You know? Yeah. And then just the the intimate Jesus and stuff like that. And then him speaking to me um, about the abuse and, and daddy speaking to me uh, about the abuse and saying, um, because he, he knew uh, that because I love to dance my, you know, my ex pulled down my pants and embarrassed me and stuff when I would dance and, and he would reassure me, you're going to have a father, a father daughter dance, that, that type of thing, just constantly uh, reassuring, uh, taught me about healing, supernatural healings, miracles, relationship miracles, and that he was with me wherever I went. There was no separation. I didn't get any privacy. Okay. <laughs> so I went to the bathroom. He was there. I went to, I went to the supermarket um, you know, he was there. Um, I remember having a list of, 
you know, and a budget. And um, he said, just throw the list away. And I'm like, uh, I have a hundred dollars exactly to spend. And he says, I'll, t- I'll tell you everything to pick out. So he, so we went to the grocery store and these are, you know what this was really teaching is trust, how to trust sweet Holy spirit, how to trust the promptings, but listen to sweet Holy spirit. She's not going to lead you astray or, you know what I mean? And, Mm -hmm. and, and so I remember going to the grocery store and picking out everything that, that, um, the Lord had told me and it coming to 99 something cents and I had a hundred dollars. So with a list thrown away, which is great. I mean, that was, that was big and back in the day for me. It it is. It's Um, still big. We're just so used to it now. (laughs) Yeah. Um, he taught me that I was crucified with Christ in a very, um, unique way and resurrected in a very, everything was shown to me. It was either shown or demonstrated or whatever. And then I remember him getting really excited, like it says in in Zephaniah, where it's talking about him clapping his hands of joy and singing over you when he told me like what my part was Mm. in the church. And he taught me wisdom about that. Um, You know, just um, like you don't have to go about that. Yeah. Yeah. I just remember him getting really excited and telling me my, he also told me though, but wisdom about it was like, you don't have to go telling people, you know, um, you don't have to go flaunting it. You know, those by the spirit will know, you know, what, what area you're, you're, you're in. I mean, I believe that we play all a part in all, but you know, our like, visionary wise or pastoral or this or that, you know, Mm -hmm. I'm talking about like the, the gifts. So, um, you know, and just teaching me wisdom on that. You don't have to always, you don't put a title in front of your name. Um, so yeah. And, but him being really excited and he taught me about, you know, you're so unrecognizable. He changed my name completely because you're so not like your old self. We went through my, very revealing clothes and we had a great time <laughs> and we threw them in the garbage oh well um <laughs> is there like um, a little um a little bit about that that you can share about like why that was a thing that needed to be done or what he showed you about that just because i'm his princess and his princess doesn't really need to be walking around like that, but no condemnation on right. me either. Right. We laughed. We got drunker than a skunk because <laughs> we were laughing so hard. I held up my mini skirt and I'm, I swear, I don't know what it covered, um, but I thought it looked good at the time. <laughs> and he, he said, what, what is this? What is this? What are you going to do with this? <laughs> that's so funny <laughs> and so we were laughing I can so see hard. that garbage <laughs> <laughs> garbage pile right now sister <laughs> <laughs> so yeah it was fun everything started to get really fun you know but I also did like I think for a time like through t- terrible tantrums Terrible tantrums. Uh, just because, you know, there was some things I didn't want to like have to give up or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I lacked such discipline. I really lacked discipline because I didn't go to school. I didn't feel I had to listen to authority and whatever. And um, he knew what I needed. He mm-hmm. definitely knew what I needed. And I needed discipline. Discipline, not in the way of like, Oh, you know, like when your dad gets the paddle out and he spanks your butt, you know, it's a total different discipline. One of the ways he disciplined me, (laughs) I call the Lord spanking. He used it for through a song. Like if I just didn't want to give up on that, Mm -hmm. he'd be like, She'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. She'll be coming around the mountain. I hated that song so bad. I hated it. I get so mad. So every time I felt I was struggling giving something, uh, I'd hear that she'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. <laughs> so 
terrible. Was I just like <laughs> to annoy you to just hurry up and do it so it, the no, song would stop? No, just like, come on, give it up. How many times do you want to go? Yeah, you're gonna come around. Are you gonna we're do gonna it come. again? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought that at first. Hard. It's That's not so that funny. hard. It's really easy. Come on. Oh Why are gosh. we going around this mountain? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. That's, That's so funny. funny. Yeah, oh, now well. I can laugh. <laughs> yeah, but at the time you were. I couldn't tolerate that song for the longest time. <laughs> Turn it off. Um, yeah. Um, so funny. But, yeah. But you, uh, but you did it. Like, like you were able to. So you said you struggled with authority before. So oh, yeah, when he would do this and you're going through this, like, even though you threw tantrums and you didn't want to do it, like, did, was there more grace to do it now that you knew who he was uh, and he was walking this, walking through this with you? Or was there still like, it was up to you to, to no, want to it obey? Wasn't or... up to me. I didn't understand it. Mm -hmm. And so he showed me, he showed me, he showed me a picture of a cage and the door was wide open and there was Jesus standing at any time. You can just step right out. Mm -hmm. So easy. Just step out, mm -hmm. just step out. That was it. And then I remember just being frustrated and, um, and I remember I like had a pillow and I was like screaming into it. <laughs> Such a brat. Um, and one thing about him too is he doesn't like condemn you or yell at you or scream at you or whatever. He's like, okay, all right. You know, <laughs> it's like a good and, parent that knows his kid is like, yep. Processing oh, yeah, all this yeah. will and emotions and everything. Yeah. And so I had had it. Okay. It was one of my meltdowns and, um, and we're growing, yeah, we're growing, exactly. you know, um, but I see that a lot in the church. I see tantrum. Yeah, <laughs> for real. Yeah. So what I went through, like, you know, it's very normal. Yeah. But um, but I, I had had it and I was like, okay, that's it. Get out. And I threw my Bible in the garbage. What? <laughs> <laughs> Can you believe that? <laughs> because I'm starting to get comfortable with him. Like, okay, now I'm not scared. You're going to thump me on the head or you're not going to smite me with a bolt of lightning. Okay. Just get out. Um, and so I was holding my baby at the time too, holding the baby, bouncing him and the baby. So Jesus is right in front of me and the baby goes, bah, bah. Yeah. and I'm like, oh my God, he can see him as well as I can. And so uh, then I, within two minutes, I'm like, okay, come back. Even though I know darn well, he never left. You know what I'm saying? So, just, yeah. so I, that, I think that was the end of like my tantrum stage. Yeah. I had, I'm like, all right, that's it. This is, this is, you know, it's, and he used to remind me all the time. My, my yoke is easy. My burden is light, you know? Yeah. So it's not, if it's hard, it's not, you know. Mm -hmm. I guess I was um, asking about that, like just how it felt when you're going through that. Cause I felt like I went like through a similar process where he was asking me to let go of things. Some of it was a little bit of religiosity from the church that I went to. I felt like I had to get rid of some things and it, there were some things I wish I hadn't gotten rid of, but there was a lot though that I know he, he asked me to get rid of. And when he did that, there was like this sense of trust me, you know, trust me that this is good. And, mm -hmm. uh, and so it made it easier because I also was just so in love with him. Like I knew that I could trust him and I knew that he loved me and I knew that whatever he asked of me was good, but it was still hard to get rid of some things. Um, but I guess I was asking because like doing something out of obedience versus trust and love, which I know that's technically the same thing, but that's not how some people see it. You know, like you can grudgingly obey um, versus doing an act out of trust. Yeah, I didn't 
I don't think I ever did anything grudgingly obeyed. I don't think I did that. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think that it was all by his grace and, you know, there was a tantrum. I don't know, but I think that like, I'm not going to win. Like I'm I'm not going to win. Like I don't have a chance. (laughs) Like, um, so, and getting to know him, we were building a relationship. Yeah. That's what we were really doing. We really were. If this is it's a this is a relational gospel by yeah. all means. If I had one word, it's relational. Yeah. yeah. I mean. So he just proved, knowing that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just he learning. <laughs> yeah, over and over and over. So um um yeah, so just and and through this all and and then, you know, uh, like even count like counseling, like d- I remember, I'll never forget daddy, like him feeling him wrap his arms around me and talking about my mother and losing my mother. And just like, so, you know, he's such a safe place to talk, you know, however you're feeling such a non judgmental place. And then I, I'll never forget when he had said, um, I'm so sorry. And I'm like, what? And that kind of offended me because it's like, why are you saying sorry? But more of like, like a sympathetic father, you know, like a, like a, just a great sympathetic father. Um, And then having that discussion, did you kill my mother? That type of just having that discussion with him and, and, you know, daddy revealing, you know, to me, uh, who he truly is and that there's, there is no death in him. Mm -hmm. So just, um, you know, stuff like that. And then going through that and then he discussed, um, prophetic things like that were going to be happening in the world, you know, and those things have come to pass. He was like COVID and stuff like that. And during this time I didn't have I wasn't like on the phone with friends or anything. So they were quite concerned. They were getting more and more concerned. Because <laughs> when they did finally get a hold of me, uh, whoa, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. The, o- um, the only one that I could talk to you um, during this time um, was my my dad. Um, oh, wow. And he was, nice. he was the only one that that defended me and he would get jacked up by listening to what happened during the day. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so yeah. Good. He would Aww. literally call me and say, what did the Lord say today? Oh yeah. Of all the people, what a gift to be able to go like to have your dad along that with you. That's amazing. Yeah. So that, yeah, that was amazing. And I was so thankful to him while the rest of the family was panicking <laughs> um, he was saying, no, 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 no. What's happening is so awesome. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, he was my number one, um, cheerleader and getting jocked while he was, <laughs> 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 which was really nice. Uh, yeah. And then, um, he taught me about the law versus grace and, um, kind of showed me in a, in a funny way on that. Um, I just remember uh, he. I opened the Bible and he told me where to open it to. I can't remember, but it was on a law. It was just one, mm-hmm. one law. And it says, if you don't obey, blah, blah, blah. And I go, I can't do that because I wasn't. I wasn't obedient, you know. I, I And I was scared of that word because I got beat, you know. Right. So I, I when I had said, I can't do that. I can't be obedient Mm -hmm. and I'm not joking. I don't know how many people I heard and in my household, which, you know, of all the angels and Christ and everyone. Yes. 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 We found one. We found one. We found one. We found one who can't do it. We found one. Oh my God. So excited. I'll never forget that. And I go, what in the world you're excited because I can't be obedient. I mean, that was a profound moment for me. Wow. I was like, wait a minute. Uh, um, And then teaching me about 
you know, you're not, you don't have to sit there and confess each sin over, you know, you don't, you don't have to do that yeah. or teaching me, um, about the obnoxiousness of a preacher screaming, repent constantly. Mm. So mm. I would literally be going around cleaning the house or whatever. And I'd feel a tap on my head and I'd hear repent, repent. And at first I thought it was funny. I thought, oh, <laughs> You know, that's kind of funny. And then, but it lasted, repent, repent, repent. And I'm like, okay, this is starting to make me mad. He's all, you think? Uh-huh. So teaching me like, that is not the way I do stuff. Uh-huh. Wow. So um, he showed me, you know, the the Garden of Eden and, and how the garden is is us. It's here. It's heaven on earth. He showed me, um, go, I went outside and he showed me there was just butterflies everywhere and just all the animals were drawn to, to Jesus. And I was just like, wow, this is freaking amazing, you know? And then um, at one of that point, there was butterflies in a perfect circle going around my head, just like that. <laughs> oh, wow. I couldn't believe it. And, and my kids and everyone saw that one. They were like, oh, my God, look, <laughs> oh my God, you guys. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, I saw um, I saw a video of a guy who he was standing in the water. It was about waist deep. And he was actually yeah. wearing a Chosen hat, you know, the TV series, The Chosen. So he was, like, mm-hmm. wearing a hat that said The Chosen on it. And their, their, um, their symbol is, like, the ring of fish going in a circle oh and there yeah. was a school of fish going in a circle around him while he's standing wow. in the water yep That's yeah cool so all the animal miracles and stuff yeah. like that it was it was amazing um we gardened together and like Aww. had to pull up roots had to pull up oh. roots and I couldn't do it on my own Um, so I had to go ask for help and in the same way he says, in the same way I am. So I got to ask for help. Dude, Um, it's like, sorry, but it's, it is funny how similar, um, the shack is to some of the things that you experienced. Yeah. It's like, no, and that, it's like he was picking up on that. I was like, oh yes, finally, finally. (laughs) Yeah, it's so awesome. Because like you said, yeah. I mean, it's for everybody. And so I, you know, and then so the author, William Paul Young, like writing through that book, you know, and he says, this is fiction, but it's like I know. nothing is, what is it, that scripture? It's like nothing that is created is like created outside of him. You know, like everything is originated in him. Yeah, Everything moves and lives and has its being in him. And no, nobody can think of anything beyond what he's already thought of. Or <laughs> Right. So it's like, this was being, this is being released to the body. And the shack was such a profound book, but it was also very offensive. And it still is very offensive to many, it many is. people. Yeah. And uh, it had offended me at one time. And that was just because I heard that God was portrayed as a woman. And, uh, but, and so I was so against it for a long time, but then when, but then the Lord told me to read that book. And Mm -hmm. so I obeyed, you know, like I, I want to though, you know, like I just did it. Cause it's like, you know, he tells you, it's like what you're saying. Like he, he tells you to do something, you know, you can't do it, but it just happens anyways. Cause we're that grace. Yeah. Yeah, um, It was amazing. Like. I just thought, how how come Christians have been knocking this for so long and spreading so slandering, you know, slandering it? And then here you end up having, there's a lot of similar things in that book that you experienced. So it's just cool how he was obviously picking up on the heart of the, of the Trinity and mm-hmm. getting similar yeah. answers from the Lord. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, it was. It you know it it is very similar. I remember watching that, going, "Wow, wow, we." I'm like, and I thought it was a true story too, because I'm like, "Yes, you know, finally, there, you yeah. know." Because I I thought I'll never tell my story. I'll never. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I told I I thought I'd never tell my story. I'm like, "There's no way. Wow. There's no way 
to tell it. Um, number one, I didn't even know how to like process it, not even taking in consideration that I would actually grow in it because the disciples walked with Jesus and they didn't know a lot of things that he was talking about till after he went to the cross. And it was after cross. That's when even their vocabulary changed after cross. They started saying, daddy, 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 this daddy, that before it was, um, you know, uh, you know, I want to see the father. <laughs> She's like, if you yeah. see me, you've seen the father, you know, they, yeah. their whole vocabulary changed. And Rabbi, so Lord, them, they had to grow in it. They had to grow in it. So just because you walk, um, just, and just because I walked with, with him, you know, um, for that period of time, I still had to grow just like, and he told me you're going to go through everything, everything that everyone else goes through. And that's through the the grips of religion. Even I was warned. I was even warned, um, you know, that, uh, that there would be false, false teachers, false prophets. And I really didn't listen too much to that. I didn't pay attention well enough mm -hmm. because I, I did fall into the grips of false prophet. You know, I thought, I thought everyone, well, everyone is saved. I'm like, well, you know, they must know the truth, but no, that's not the case. Yeah. That's not the case. Yeah, Everybody has to, to talk about that and like the balance of that, but, because there is how people will take it to that extreme. Um, mm -hmm. and, and people will ask that too, as a defense against the possibility of universal reconciliation, they use that as a defense and how that couldn't be because of deception, because of people that are doing evil and things like that. Um, and, or why, why preach the gospel? Why Talk about Jesus if everyone is saved or going to be saved, you know. Well, anyway. yeah, and you you still need to um, be discipled. I'm a firm believer in discipleship. Mm -hmm. um, just because you you've got to grow in this in this good news gospel, and and if if I could pick anything, any word that what what my experience was discipleship. Really, that's what. It, yes, absolutely. He literally taught me on every subject of the gospel that that I see that that people have been walking in this stuff for a while now. Even at resolution and stuff like that, and on that whole clan and everyone, you know, they they know the gospel. They 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 do. They have these points of the the gospel. You know, of you are righteous, your identity in Christ. Um, you know, stuff like that. They, all of it. You know. You need to be discipled. I definitely need to be. And he let me know that sanctification is not a process and it has nothing, you know, like you, you just grow, you're growing in something. And I remember them telling me every day, today you're such and such years old, or today you're, you know, and I get older and older, like nothing of my, do, no doing on my part. Yeah, no, no doing on my part. Um, baptism, um, like he he baptized me in my kid's baby pool. <laughs> oh, that's so awesome. How did that go? Yeah. It's fun. Everything he did was fun. It was like <laughs> it wasn't serious, you know, not that we didn't have serious moments, but it was yeah. fun. I mean, he gave me um he he talked about taking a drink of this stuff and it was the wine. <laughs> <laughs> You know, he literally tilt my head back and I'm like, yeah, what is this? It's the <laughs> wine. Uh, so, and then it was just a party. Oh my God. We had some serious <laughs> parties. Even the, sim even what seems sim the simplest stuff is loving on your kids, you know, reassuring them, um, building them up. Um, don't be too hard on them. Um, focus on their giftings as well. Um, it just, he's just so kind and compassionate. I don't know. Um, and it wasn't before long before I started to like completely fall head over heels. And then I'm like, I can totally live this way. I can totally <laughs> live this way. Yeah. I can oh. totally freaking live this way with you appearing to me every day. And then he uh, he was kind of at the point where he kind of broke the news of, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. You're not going to, you're not going to 
see me in the way you see you've been seeing me. And when I mean see him, it was like the face to face type thing. Now I still, you know, have dreams, visions, and hear his voice sometimes and, you know, see parts or whatever, but but it's not like it was. But when he had told me that, I did feel like sad, you know, and even now, like I, you know, you just I want to tear up because there's not a day now, now one at one point in time I had told him, he said, you'll miss these days. And I said, no, I won't. When I was throwing my tantrum (laughs) (laughs) and I said, no, I won't. And he says, oh yeah, you will. And he's right. Like there's not a day I don't think about it. He's just so beautiful. Um, You know, daddy is like this. You put on a dress, a, a really a wholesome dress. And because he wants you to go to a Baptist church because he's got some stuff to teach you or something. And um, you put on your dress and you're insecure. You didn't know what love was. You've always been told otherwise um, that you're a piece of trash. And you hear daddy's voice so clearly. And he says, you look so beautiful. And I'm so proud of you. And you smell good. Like like our fragrance to him. It's like better than a barbecue. <laughs> um, and just him putting his arms around you mm-hmm. and saying, you're, my, you're mine. You'll always be mine. And Jesus looking at you as the bride and just in awe and so excited about his marriage. And Holy Spirit, as mother, who couldn't be prouder of her children. And, you know, and that, and by that point, I couldn't imagine going on without a face to face. Yeah. It it fit in my life. But what I've realized now is we have, we can have all that. We do have all that. That is our reality. He's here now. <laughs> Whether we see him or not, but we see you with the, the eyes of our heart and we know he's here. Mm-hmm. And it's just, it's amazing. So that's kind of uh, how that all kind of slowly, and even then he slowly kind of visually faded out, even though. I could still hear him and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, after that, he said, well, what what you got is very contagious. So now go on out. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it so is. It so is. And like you were saying that he knows how to win us over. Like you literally were throwing tantrums, telling him to leave you alone. <laughs> yeah. And then it gets to the points where you fall so in love with him. You don't want it to change. And that is, yeah, that's why I believe that, yeah, no one will be able to deny him forever. No, like he knows how to get to our hearts. He knows how to make us fall in love with him. And why wouldn't he? Because Christ created us. Yeah. He knows exactly. Yeah. He knows exactly. It's literally knitted into our being. Like it's, it's what we come from. I, I had gotten a revelation recently about how children that had been um, adopted out, Mm -hmm. they could have had the best family, you know, the best adoptive parents ever uh, Mm -hmm. made them feel loved and accepted and everything. But they reach a point in their life where there is something that is a part of them where they're like, I want to meet my real parents. Of you know, course. Yes. because they know that's where they came from and they will feel that longing until they, until they meet them, you know? And I just feel like that is the case with humanity is that like, we are created from God. We're created in God's image. We're created for that relationship, for that family to be in that family. And until we realize that, until we experience that, we will feel like that, that longing. And that's Mm -hmm. why Jesus does use many scenarios of like how we've been adopted into God's family. Mm -hmm. You know, we were always gods to begin with, but from our perspective, that's what it's like. 
You know, it's like we've, we're being adopted because we're raised by our earthly parents. We're surrounded by the world's influence. And then we get to know this amazing father. So for our experience, it's like we've been adopted by a really good parent or something. But the good news yeah. is that he was always our parent and we can, we can get to meet him and fill that void, see where we came from and and he meets all the expectations and above and beyond. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> it makes yeah. us feel so loved and seen. And mm. yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it's amazing. He's amazing. He's so patient yeah. with our, our struggles. Oh, yeah. Really? Our <laughs> the, the stuff that we think bothers him is nothing. <laughs> nothing. It really, it really, it, it really is nothing. And it's, it's kind of a joke. <laughs> it's just Us a joke. feeling like we can offend him and bother him and he'll lose his patience. I think he's like un unoffendable. <laughs> I'm like from, yeah, I'm pretty sure you're unoffendable. We get offended, but uh, I think he's unoffendable. <laughs> yeah. And then him telling me back then, you know, like, don't think this is just for you. Because, you know, he had a lot of people in mind. He, I mean, he has all of humanity in mind. And it, you know, but just that the people that he was raising up in the same good news gospel. And now it's all starting to come to pass. And, you know, seeing people be used um, by by the Lord, because, you know, cause, well, cause they're willing and, you know, and by his grace and preaching this good news gospel, it's, it's pretty amazing. Just like he told me, you know, like words, like some are word for word, like even in their creativity. Yeah. Will you share, we share that and then we can like wrap it up for now. Well, like for your example, on your birthday and stuff at the resolution, it was your, it was your birthday. And the Lord had back in the day, the Lord had, and it wasn't just the Lord. It was, it was father, son, Holy spirit, the cloud of witnesses, all of heaven, the angels, oh, wow. <laughs> everybody. So what was singing happy birthday? Like they did it like five times in one day. Um, and I was like, on one of my birthdays and I'm like, wow, like this, wow, this is overwhelmingly good. <laughs> and, um, and then at resolution, it was your birthday and just, out of nowhere, no one knows that. No one knew that that, that that's what happened to me. And uh, or that's what you know, all of heaven did to me. Uh, and they just God's children, here's God's children with yeah. with the good news gospel, singing happy birthday to Audrey Dutton uh, about five times in one yeah. day, <laughs> just because it's so good. Yeah, and yeah. That he heaven celebrates us, you know. They they really do, they celebrate us. Um, uh, yeah, they really do. So just, so stuff like that, or I've seen preachers say, um, like Crowder, like I, one time he was talking about, you know, Jesus is closer to you. Like he's like your Siamese twin. And, um, the Lord showed me that, um, <laughs> back in the day where he's like, look, we're like Siamese twins, you know, <laughs> so like, oh my God. <laughs> you know, so so, which I'm thankful for that too, because it gave me like, not necessarily confirmation, but like, Hey, Oh, these are the people. Cause he had told me you're going to know them by the spirit. And that's what the spirit told me back then. So that's, yeah. that's exactly what happened. So it's just pretty, it's pretty amazing, you know, of how he's raising these people up, you know, to preach the good news gospel. And yeah. cause that is the gospel. And I see the whole church is, it's coming back to its roots, mm -hmm. the real good news, no, the yeah. universal reconciliation, yeah. the finished works. Like that's what they preached from the beginning and for, for yeah. hundreds of years. They did. They really did. And uh, yeah, and it's, it, it is awesome. It's, it's totally awesome. You were talking about getting baptized and you said that it was just so fun and that everything he did with you was just so fun. Even though you talked about some serious things, it was still so fun. And you were living in a situation that was not fun. Like you're literally living with one of the worst in one of the worst situations that anyone could experience. 
And what came to my mind is how, like, when people hear the good news gospel and they hear that Jesus is in a good mood, they hear that God and Jesus and Holy Spirit are in a good mood, they get offended. And and a lot of people that are, like, empathetic, um, they will be upset by that because of all the horrible things that are happening in the world, you know, know. starvation, human trafficking, sexual abuse, you know, all these horrible things and way more than that. And so then they, they feel like they have to be so serious all the time. And I went through this, especially Mm -hmm. when you feel like you're an intercessor and you like want to intercede for the world and you know, all this stuff going on around you. Um, Right. And so what I saw was that, these people that are living in these situations, most of the time, they try to self-medicate or they try to distract themselves. Mm-hmm. They they want to do something that's going to momentarily make them feel happy, right? Mm-hmm. They, mm-hmm. they try to watch a movie or they get high or they get drunk or they party or maybe they go alone and read a book. Um, they go and smoke, you know. They smoke mm-hmm. to get their like endorphins moving and things like that. Or um, like there's just so many different ways that people self-medicate or things that they do to try and bring a little bit of, of hope and joy into their life in the midst of them living in abuse or neglect. And uh-huh. so really Jesus coming and being full of joy and funny and lighthearted and all of that, it really is the answer to all of that. Like, because that's how other people are trying to get through it anyways. And so he is the ultimate joy. He is the ultimate high. He is the ultimate peace. He is the Mm -hmm. ultimate love. And so why not come into those situations with joy and love and silliness? Because... Mm -hmm. That really is what they want anyways. I hope that makes sense. Yeah. But just addressing like that contrast, because so many people feel that way is like, people are going through hell. You don't need to be being funny and silly all the time or talking about Jesus like he's just a goofball all the time. It's like, well, why not really? Because yeah, people want that. Well, um, I mean... With mine, yeah, you can have, it just proves that you can have joy in the midst of suffering, like Apostle Paul talks about and stuff like that. So I did, I did. However, he did eventually uh, pull me away from that whole situation. Right. And when I, yeah, and because he said, and I said, well, uh, you know, basically like, why? And he's, he's like, because what kind of father would I be? And then I'm like, then why did you have me stay? And you show him like so much grace. And he goes, because what kind of God would I be? See, my ex didn't know him as father. He knew him as God. He didn't know him as father. Mm. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, and that, so father has to, he has to, that's what love says. Love says, nope, that's enough. Mm -hmm. Love says that. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, so yeah, he did deliver me. And so there is. Hope. I always thought, well, it's going to be one way or the other. Either he's going to change or the Lord's going to pull me. So, and that's, that's what he did. He pulled me in 10 years. It was 10 years of that. 10 years. Wow. Wow. 10 years. Yeah. And I mean, you know, when I was getting beat, it wasn't joyous or anything, but it did seem to mellow out. It mellowed out a lot, but not, not completely. Yeah. So, so it's not to make light of, what people are going through. No, it's I, also, I, yeah, no, I, I don't want to come off as that either, but, um, I mean, well, but no, honestly, I, know, I yeah. mean, I don't think that you're the one that went through it, you know, but I'm just saying mm-hmm. from my perspective, like what I was trying to maybe try and connect the dots with, I guess, is mm-hmm. how can such a happy gospel be possible when there's so much right. hurt going on in the world? Right. Yeah. If it wasn't happy, I'd be in the same predicament. You know, <laughs> what, what kind of future and a hope, what, what kind of help would right. I get? I mean, he promised me that he was going to get me help. That right. was my help. That was my help. So, it, yeah, 
And it, man, when you know that you're so loved, you can put up with a lot of crap. Yeah. You know what I mean? You really can. You can put up with so much crap, you know? I mean, us all Christians, we should know it. You know, you preach a happy gospel. We put up with a lot of crap. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah, and mm-hmm. the more that we're convinced of his goodness and and his finished work, like we handle things so differently. Like we handle things way more chill, with more mm-hmm. peace. And yeah. so, if if a human being can get to that point, not to say that we don't ever, you know, mm-hmm. act mm-hmm. out or throw tantrum or whatever, but like just to say that if we can still grow in that peace of not acting like that every time we're in a stressful situation or scary situation or something, then how much more does he just, can he address things with that piece? Like earlier talking about the, him being unoffendable. And for me, like I used to be so offended about a lot of things and it was very easy for me to get offended because I saw such a black and white contrast of holiness and unholiness and Mm -hmm. very easily offended. And now it's like, it's really hard to offend me because- I it should be. Yeah. Like because as do we grow in this gospel, you know, we're we're starting to look just like him. And yeah, exactly. you, you know, and you, you just get you don't get a sense like we you, you know, there comes a point when especially when you've been sitting in this gospel for a long time and you're like, okay, like really you shouldn't even be getting offended at this point. Yeah. So um <laughs> Yeah, but another thing it taught me, like dealing with of, of him sticking around, like during all the abuse, it showed me a side of him for the abuser, like his love for the abuser, his grace for the abuser, mm-hmm. his will for the abuser, a lot of his inclusion. His, I know they don't want to talk yeah. about it, but it is so true. Yeah. His inclusion mm-hmm. of the abuser. Mm-hmm. People don't want to talk about it, but it, it is the truth. Yeah. Listen, that is true justice. What is, and, and I, I've asked a group of girls this before, what is true justice? Which which brings more justice? Uh, a rapist who sits in prison all day, all night. Does that bring you justice? I mean, honestly, did it bring you justice? Or a rapist goes to prison and now preaches the gospel to a bunch of rapists saying, I thought I knew the way. And now that, that was the wrong way. Mm-hmm. Which uh, with a, a completely transformed life, which is more justice? Right. Well, the latter, clearly the latter. That's right. justice. And, <laughs> and that's our Lord. That's our Lord. Take it or leave it, like it or yeah. not. Well, and that's that domino effect of his grace and his love because that person probably had something, you know, happen to them. And it's like this cycle of injustice that happens all over the world. And so who knows what happened to them? Who knows if there was something demonic that influenced them? Who knows? You know, only God knows. And they are a victim to the curse of the Adamic sinful mm-hmm. nature um and if they don't know who their identity what their identity is in christ then they're gonna live out of that they're gonna act out of that and they're gonna right. spread that right um, so yeah that's they right. also need to be fought for and jesus fought for them too right and, and then there's also this line too of all right that's enough right because you still have to draw boundaries and be safe yes absolutely yeah. it's it, you know just wisdom and and that's we really need to hear Holy Spirit. We need to follow her leading because, you know, listen, they're experts. I'm not. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So when, yeah, when he's like, it's time to go, it was time to go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, this is, it's been a lot. And so we're going to unpack this more. I'd love to say too that like anyone listening to this if you have questions about what well, anything we've talked about, they could email me or or message me. Yeah, and then yeah, of we could maybe answer some of those. Would you mm-hmm. be down for that? Oh, totally. 
In fact, I recommend that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's great. I recommend that, you know, um, I, I really do. I think that's that's wisdom and that's good, you know? Cool. So yeah, anybody just feel free to uh, reach out and message me, you can email me and then we'll answer those questions. So be great. Yeah. You're, I feel like you're on a big undertaking with this one, man. I love it. This is so good for me. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> <laughs> this is well, so I'm good glad. for me. Like, and the, I mean, it's good for the body, it, but it's, yeah, this is like, this has me psyched. This has me pumped because, and I've been feeling like there's like a shift that's going to happen in the podcast this year. Like I'll still do, uh, you know, like interviews about people's testimonies and how they came to know the Lord. But I also yeah. just feel like there's this shift into digging deeper into um, the theology of the finished works and the the happy gospel, you know, yeah. and teaching more on that. So I think this is a great way to start yeah. that. Yeah. yeah my little girl <laughs> full fledged. <laughs> Dude, this is just it for me. Like, this is it. Like, this is the truth for me. So I just love it. I'm excited. I know. You're so sweet. You love <laughs> Jesus. You can't help I yourself. Do. You just love him. <laughs> I can't. I can't. <laughs> Where's he at? Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. Would you pray us out? I will pray us out. (laughs) Just bless everybody, really, you know. (laughs) Bless our bless the listeners and people Uh, that are just their minds are probably going a hundred miles a minute. I know. (laughs) (laughs) It's a lot. And I know it's a lot. Um oh daddy, we love you so much. We do. You're the best daddy ever. Oh. Jesus. You're the best lover ever. Yes. Holy Spirit. You really are the best comforting teaching mother ever, Lord. And I just pray for all the viewers and for Audrey as well, Lord. Um, I just pray, Lord, that you give some wild visions and dreams and encounters um, of just your heart and your love. May they all feel your authentic, real love that you have shown me, Lord, for I know that this is not just for me. It is Mm -hmm. for all humanity and all humanity in you, whether they see it or not, know it or not, feel it or not, Lord. But I am asking that you, um, Show them your your presence in, in whatever way you want to, Lord. Show them your presence. Let them be able to feel your presence, your heartbeat for all humanity and their inclusion and how excited you are to be their father and how you know everything about them all their cuteness and all their tantrums. <laughs> <laughs> And we just love you so much, Lord. And we just thank you. And we bless Audrey, Lord. May it grow. May it prosper. May may she do new things this year that are anointed by you. Oh, she's so special. She's so special. I just see Daddy just giving you the biggest hug. Ooh, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. (laughs) In Jesus' mighty, mighty name. Thank you. We so love much. you, Lord. Oh, it's hard to open my eyes again. <laughs> it's so heavy. It's so heavy. It's so thick. The love, the goodness, the beauty. <laughs> yeah, this is such a confirmation to me. So I just pray for everyone listening that this would be a confirmation to you that you mm. would receive this as word for you, that you are included in this. And if you've never even experienced something, you know, close to this, that know that it's not about looking at it that way, that this is a gift for you, that we all have all a part of the body of Jesus and um, what is for one is for the other, but we all each have our own like giftings and flavors and, 
uh, the way that we share and the the levels of creativity and and just how we do things it is all each individually so unique and important and vital so you are so vital and you are so important you are so seen and you are so loved so we just bless you with that in Jesus name amen <laughs> Thank you so much, Jessica. Thanks everyone for listening. Be sure to visit eatmedrinkmepodcast.net to join the conversation, to subscribe for emails, and leave a review. We are also now open for PayPal and Patreon donations. We are so, so thankful for your contributions, your listening support, sharing with others, and most of all, your prayers. Thank you guys so much and bless you all. Oh Lord, your love is like a hurricane. It blows my fears away. Oh Lord, you are and like lazy bees. My words You me You move me You move me You move me to yourself You chose me You chose me You chose me Choose me for yourself. I'm a believer. Like the rolling deep Washing me and you